One of the most common questions I get is, how does traditional Chinese medicine actually diagnose illness? You know, people have a lot of misconceptions about the medicine, and I've had multiple people ask me, so do you just look at a person's aura, or have a yin-yang that somehow diagnoses disease? And I don't think people realize just how scientific Chinese medicine actually is. So in this video, I want to share the four key diagnostic methods that almost every Chinese medical doctor will use. So what you can expect, honestly, in your first appointment. Hey guys, I'm Alex Hine, current doctoral student in classical or traditional Chinese medicine and author of the book Master of the Day. Now, classically, there are four diagnostic skills known as Wang, Wen, Wen, Qie. Now, Wang here stands for observation. And what observation means is we observe the complexion of the patient's face. So complexion is obviously, what does the patient's face look like? Is it more red, like a person who's very sweaty and easily gets hot? Or is it very pale? Is there, are there spots anywhere? Is there a certain color, like green or yellow? The second thing we look at with complexion is the tongue. So the tongue size, the tongue coating, any little red spots on the tongue, any scalloping on the side of the tongue, the second art here is what's called smelling or listening. And in smelling or listening, we listen to not only the patient's words, so the way they speak, they could be very loud, talking like this, very strong, or they could be like this, and my life is so difficult. And so those things are actually diagnostically very important because they'll show where a patient is. So if there's a really big, like the stereotypical businessman, he's got acid reflux and indigestion, and he's talking really loud like this, it's probably not a deficient condition. So these are very useful. We listen to coughing and breathing, as well as smells the patient gives off. The second when is inquiry. So this is the classic intake form. So we ask questions like, what do you prefer? Do you prefer warm drinks or cold drinks? Do you tend to run hot, tend to run cool? Do you like extra blankets when you sleep? Or do you always wake up kicking them off you? Are you thirsty? Is there any... Are there any issues with your urination? Is there frequency, burning, and so on and so forth? How are your bowel movements? How often? Are they solid? Are they more loose? Do they feel hot? How is your period? How's your menses? If there's bleeding, or there's spotting, or there's pain, is it before, is it after? How heavy? What's the color? It goes really in depth. How's your sleep? Do you have problems going to sleep? Do you wake up? Do you wake up at a certain time? Can you not fall asleep until a certain time? And how's your appetite? So these are all key questions we use to figure out very important diagnostic criteria in regard to how Chinese medicine diagnoses illness and disease. The last skill here, qie, is palpation. So the most famous qie is pulse diagnosis and literally channel palpation. So in pulse diagnosis, the physician is actually feeling three areas of the radial artery and we're feeling not only the strength, the depth, and the width of the pulse, but we're also feeling each individual position. The first position is known as the tsun, the second is the guan, and the third is the chu. And these each actually also correlate to certain organs in the person's body. So at the end of this large intake, the questioning, the listening, the smelling, the asking, the palpating, we've, we're given all of this diverse data, and we have to put these into a concrete diagnosis all together and then we do our pattern differentiation and our differential diagnosis as well. But all of these are very key in Chinese medicine. And so again, this is much more concrete than do we diagnose through aura? I don't know any doctor who does. Or do we use yin yang to diagnose? I mean, technically, yes. Technically, all these are to understand. Is the patient more hot? Is the patient more cold? Are they more deficient and tired and weak? Or are they really excessive and hot and sweaty and overdoing it? All of these are very key information. Alright guys, so I hope that video helps introduce you to a bit about how traditional or classical Chinese medicine diagnoses illness and disease and health. The best way to stay in touch is to get my free guide, How to Add 10 Years to Your Life with Classical Chinese Medicine at alexhine.com forward slash free. And you can also watch my latest two related videos right here and right here.